It's really exciting to take these out of storage and look at them and you sort of get a sense of the excitement and sense of discovery that Freer had when he first saw these manuscripts. And you can just imagine how exciting, I mean, it's something like out of Indiana Jones. These Bibles are really important for a number of reasons because they date to a period um, when Christianity had transitioned from being a sort of underground cult religion to being a normative religion. And so it was at the very moment that these texts were being standardized and codified. They're made from animal skin, um, also called parchment. And it can be the animal skins that were used were varied, either um, goat, sheep, uh, or cow, traditionally. Parchment is its actually a very nice material. It's very, um, it is essentially like leather, um, except it's not tanned. It's actually, it's, it, it feels nice. I think the main techniques that have been used to date these um, have been based on looking at the style of script and writing and words and letters used. There are other scientific tests that can be done, like carbon-14 dating. The problem with a test like that is that it's what we call a destructive analysis. Um, you actually have to take a sample, um, which then gets destroyed. And at this point in time, we don't want to put holes in, in, in our important documents. We're showing it now in the unexpected setting of Whistler's Peacock Room because that's how Charles Freer showed it when it was in his possession at his home in Detroit. So these Bibles are really important for a number of reasons because they date to a period um, when Christianity had transitioned from being a sort of underground cult religion to being a normative religion. And so it was at the very moment that these texts were being standardized and codified. There are a lot of very sort of esoteric anomalies, um, but the most famous and the most significant and certainly the one that caused the biggest stir when the Gospels were published in 1912 um, is what's known as the Freer Logion. And that's essentially a verse that follows the last chapter of the Book of Mark that occurs in no other known Gospel in the world. And it's essentially a post-resurrection appearance of Christ before some of his disciples where he proclaims the end of Satan's reign on earth. Scholars have suggested that it may relate to a now lost uh, gospel that no longer is part of the, the four gospels, um, but we really don't know what its origins are, how it ended up at the end of the book of Mark.